So uh, in the final speaker, well, for final speaker of this morning section, and we will have uh, Sergey Oblitzing from Nottingham, and uh, he's going to tell us about spherical functions and their mirror symmetry. Uh, let's welcome Sergey. Uh, hello, everyone. Dadia Hao. Show Xiang Gansi, Hui Ju Banfangi Yao Qin. So, thank you very much for inviting me uh, to give a talk. And uh, uh, I will present my uh, project that I'm doing for also like over uh, 10 years. Uh, so it is uh, devoted to, so the main object uh, is our spherical functions. And uh, so let me recall, let me start with recalling uh, how spherical functions arise. So first of all, I do the harmonic analysis um, approach. So it's, uh, suppose we have a locally compact Hausdorff space with a positive measure. And uh, so that some locally compact group acts transitively on this set, preserving the measure. And then the group uh, acts also on the space of functions on this, on our Hausdorff space. And uh, so, in my talk, I will uh, focus on special case when uh, the, uh, our space X is a homogeneous space of our group. So it is a space of cosets of our locally compact group with respect to some closed subgroup. So examples of uh, such sets, they are quite uh, diverse. So it can be finite sets, uh, then we are uh, dealing with the symmetric group and its subgroups. Uh, it can be also a graph if we are speaking uh, of uh, groups of uh, finite fields. Uh, it can be a sphere and dimensional sphere. So then we have um, case of uh, our group G is compact. And uh, the case that I will focus mainly in today's talk is the case of uh, non-compact lo uh, locally compact Hausdorff space when the group uh, is non-compact. So for example, it is upper half plane and uh, then it is a real group um, and we have a homogeneous space of uh, a non-compact real group. Then uh, suppose D of X is algebra of G invariant differential operators on our homogeneous space. Uh, well, G invariant means that our, we consider operators that are uh, invariant uh, with respect to natural action of our group G on the cosets with respect to K. Then a uh, spherical function uh, is by definition, uh, first of all, it is a function on our homogeneous space, which is common eigenfunction with respect to all um, G invariant differential operators on our space. And uh, the problem of harmonic analysis is to, uh, for arbitrary function on our space X, uh, decompose it, so express in as a combination of spherical functions. So this is um, harmonic analysis approach to spherical functions. And of course there is, since we have a group, uh, we have, we can also uh, say, um, introduce spherical functions in terms of uh, group theory. So uh, here, um, uh, let me note, first that if we have a compact group, which will be K, uh, in the case of compact group, we know that the, its regular representation decomposes into direct sum of endomorphism algebras of all the irreducible representations of K. Uh, since group K is compact, all the representations are finite dimensional. 
and the um, orthogonal basis in our uh, regular representation is given by the what is called matrix coefficients. So uh, since in our uh, regular representation it is unitary L2K, we have natural pairing, and uh, we take just uh, for any two vectors in uh, in any representation of K, we can find the matrix coefficient, uh, which makes sense since our uh, all the reducible representations are finite dimensionals. So the group acts by uh, finite matrices and matrix coefficient can be defined in, in some basis. Uh, so now in our case of symmetric uh, of homogeneous spaces, uh, if the group is locally compact, so not necessarily compact, we still we have maximal compact uh, subgroup in G. We can consider also regular representation of G and uh, its decomposition with respect to uh, endomorphism, uh, endomorph endomorphism algebras is uh, less trivial. However, uh, the spherical function in any sub-representation of regular representation can be defined as a matrix uh, coefficient. And uh, the reference spherical refers to the um, situation because this matrix coefficient will be um, is uh, 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 left invariant under action of the maximal compact subgroup, uh, which is uh, Okay, uh, and so here we have this phi k. It is a spherical vector, and uh, which is k invariant um, element in our representation. And other vector v is just arbitrary. And uh, then uh, the our um, problem of representation theory is just given a uh, space of uh, functions on our um, homogeneous space uh, decompose it into irreducible representations. So this is a, a group theory approach and uh, the spherical functions, of course, in this setting and in harmonic analysis setting are the same. And uh, so please uh, note that in representation theory approach on this slide, you don't see any invariant differential operators. And uh, I'm we will see how they rise in group theory setting. This will be crucial uh, point uh, of um, my approach. So now uh, let me comment on the general idea, the main idea of the project. So we are just uh, studying harmonic analysis and representation theory of locally compact groups. So we study spherical functions. Then uh, uh, in this theory, in, in, my, in this talk, I'm going to explain how in this theory, geometry of this space and quantum integrability enters the theory, come into the theory. And then uh, altogether using the um, methods and constructions of uh, representation theory and harmonic analysis, we apply them to the uh, problems of number theory and automorphic representations to the Langlands um, program. So this is just the uh, general outline of the talk. And uh, uh, so next, uh, let me just uh, start with the main object of the talk. It is, if you remember, we have introduced uh, spherical functions to be a matrix coefficient of a k fixed vector with respect to compact subgroup and arbitrary vector v. So uh, here we choose, we make a special choice of our um, vector v. So it is a character of the unipotent subgroup. So more precisely, uh, Suppose we have a group over uh, either reals or periodic fields, but you can think of a real group uh, at the moment. 
uh, then we have Ivasava decomposition of the group, uh, which actually says that any um, element of a group can be decomposed as a product of uh, element. If you think of G as a group of transformation of vector space, so it's orthogonal transformation, then it's uh, A is uh, like dilations of the space, it's diagonal uh, matrix, and U is um, transvection, so unipotent. Matrix. Then uh, we take the subgroup, which is B, which is called Borel subgroup. And uh, for the group of inversible matrices for GLM, this will be a subgroup of um, upper triangular matrices. And uh, we take a character of this subgroup and consider the induced representation. So we induce uh, one dimensional representation of the subgroup B, which is complement to our K. Uh, in G and introduce spherical Whittaker function in this as a matrix uh, coefficient in this re induced representation. So uh, namely, we take the matrix coefficient of a K fixed vector by definition of spherical uh, function. And the other vector is Whittaker vector, which is just a character of the unipotent subgroup in the Ivasava uh, decomposition. So this is um, definition of spherical Whittaker function. So uh, again, this is the main object of my um, talk, uh, which is provided by special choice of the um, vector V in definition of spherical vector. That's why it's called Whittaker function. Uh, so for example, in the case of GL2R, uh, we have the Ivasava decomposition uh, is uh, provides is written like this, and A is the diagonal subgroup with positive entry set diagonal. Then uh, the um, uh, the spherical Whittaker function in this setting for this group is given by the Bessel function of the third kind. So it's from the uh, standard book on analysis. It might be Whittaker Watson or Watson's book on Bessel functions. It is just a classical special function. And uh, so uh, remarkably, I want to mention another integral representation for this um, uh, spherical Whittaker function is uh, Mellin Barnes integral representation, which has this form. It is a kind of, we have a product of gamma functions in the integrand, and we take a kind of uh, Fourier transform of this product. Uh, both these uh, integral representations are very important in the whole um, uh, approach, in the whole, for the whole project as uh, I'm going to explain by the end of my talk, these two integral representations are mirror dual to each other. And uh, uh, so that the first, uh, in the first integral representation, the uh, function in the exponential of integrand, it is, uh, so the whole integral should be seen as stationary phase integral and the exponential of uh, the function in the exponent should be seen as uh, landau ginzburg potential in the landau ginzburg model. And uh, in the mellin barnes integral, so this has um, uh, interpretation in terms of symplectic geometry that I'm going to comment as well. That's why, so uh, these two integral representations, they are, Mm, very important in this approach. And I'm going to now to comment uh, on it and explain the um, ingredients uh, of it. So first, let me, uh, now I'm going to introduce the quantum integrability, how it enters in the, um, in the theory. So first of all, I want to, remind you that in the very first slide when we introduce spherical function uh, as a common eigenfunction of uh, uh, 
invariant differential operators. So in group theory approach, how these differential op uh, operators arise. Namely, on our homogeneous space, uh, we have Laplacian, which is a G invariant for Laplacian. And uh, we can take its projection with respect to Iwasawa decomposition. So it becomes a differential operator on the diagonal matrix. Then it takes this form. Uh, here you can uh, notice that I write simple roots. So this is universal form for uh, uh, general root systems. And you can observe from uh, this formula that uh, of course, the theory of uh, spherical functions on symmetric spaces is uh, defined in more general setting and not for all root systems uh, group theory is uh, works properly. But for semi-simple Lie groups, of course, we can do both. Uh, then, uh, the, in terms of representation theory, what we can say is uh, that uh, given our group G, which we can think as GLN or R, uh, we introduce its Lie algebra and its universal enveloping algebra UG. Then the elements of the center of the universal enveloping algebra uh, will act by scalars in any irreducible representation. And therefore, under the action of these central elements when we mm, insert them in matrix element definition of our uh, spherical Whittaker function. Uh, this will just by construction mean that our spherical Whittaker function is eigenfunction with respect to uh, all the central elements acting uh, in our representation in this way. So the mm, uh, eigenvalues are just symmetric uh, functions in, uh, in these lambdas, which are parameters of uh, our representation. And uh, in the bottom of the slide, you can see the um, example, what are these um, differential operators look like in the case of GL2. So uh, in my previous slides, so these functions, uh, these two functions, they are eigenfunctions with respect to this, um, the two differential operators. And obviously this uh, pair of differential operators can be equivalently rewritten in a form of Bessel equation from, again, from the analysis textbook. Uh, also, uh, another remark is that uh, you can, uh, uh, I want to say that both these integral representations are generalized to GLN and to other classical groups. And uh, this is just um, also uh, is done using the um, quantum integrable systems. So from the point of view in terms of mathematical physics, this commuting family of differential operators acting in our uh, spherical Whittaker functions, they are called like a quantum integrable system. So they call this H as commuting Hamiltonians and that, that explains why I use H here. And uh, <clears throat> so, and also it's called quantum Toda D module. And uh, here word quantum means that momenta of the system uh, moment operators act by differential operators so that uh, here, so this is a kinetic term. So it's second act by second or the differential operators. That's why it's like quantum in this sense. Uh, right, so now uh, I want to, you may, uh, one may ask, Okay, uh, these differential operators, it is good, but uh, when we have, uh, I mentioned uh, spherical functions on finite sets, on uh, spaces of a finite fields or periodic fields, how uh, shall we introduce what will be these differential operators? So in this uh, case, representation theory gives us uh, answer. 
it is the um, Heki algebra construction. And the, so this is the Heki algebra of K bi-invariant functions uh, on the, on our group G. And uh, of course, uh, algebra of K bi-invariant functions act by convolution on K invariant functions, which are spherical functions, and they are uh, eigenfunctions with respect to uh, this action. So alternatively to saying that uh, uh, our spherical function is common eigenfunction of G invariant differential operators, we can say that uh, spherical Whittaker functions are common eigenfunctions under the action of Heck algebra by integral operators. And uh, this is um, gives um, two ways to look at uh, uh, spherical functions. And uh, here uh, I want to introduce um, the uh, very special generating function, uh, one parameter family depending on parameter S of K by invariant functions such that the eigenvalue of our spherical Whittaker function gives a, uh, actually a L function of the uh, described into the dual group. And uh, it will be, as you see in the uh, bottom, so in the case of real group, it is um, given by the product of gamma functions. And uh, uh, in the case of real group. And uh, this, of course, should be uh, seen here that uh, in the mellin barnes integral representation, uh, integrand contains exactly this L function. And in this sense, it is uh, dual, uh, dual integral uh, representation. So <clears throat> next, I go to the second part which gives us um, advantage we push forward these uh, methods from um, uh, quantum integrable systems and we consider quantum uh, q-deformed spherical functions namely we uh, consider the uh, function which are restricted on a lattice so here z are just complex numbers and uh, lambda is a partition mm, so it's just uh, we restrict our function on a lattice uh, we uh, substitute the differential operators by uh, q difference operators the eigenvalues still remain to be elementary symmetric functions in this variable z so for gl2 the difference operators will be this where t lambda are just uh, mm, uh, shifting lambda i's by one. Uh, also, uh, this uh, quantum integrable system uh, theory tells us how to uh, make Q deformation of Baxter operator. And we have constructed it as well. And the eigenvalue is given uh, by such a function. Uh, the main point of this deformation is that we, in fact, this Q deformed Whittaker function, it interpolates between real and piatic cases. So if we have uh, Q deformed spherical Whittaker function and the eigenvalue, so the Q deformed L function, by spe uh, specializing Q either to one or to zero, we get the real case and periodic case, which uh, unifies somehow the two Heke algebra descriptions, so the Baxter operators, and uh, unifies the uh, integral representations and the theory as well. So here I want to um, emphasize that the whole construction is um, made using the uh, theory of quantum integrable systems. And uh, so, uh, so far, there is no 
uh, I mean, it is very interesting and important problem to describe all the ingredients in terms of uh, representation theory and harmonic analysis of, on quantum groups, on Q deformation of our universal enveloping algebra. And uh, I let me introduce just results that are known uh, so far. So uh, first is the explicit uh, formula for the uh, Q deformed spherical Whittaker function. So this is uh, this formula, it gives a Q deformation. Uh, so here in this formula, the summation goes over Gelfand Satian patterns, which is just the triangular array of positive integers P and K subjected to the uh, inequalities. So like this. So we have a collection of a triangular array of positive integers subjected to uh, inequalities. And we uh, sum in this formula, we make summation over all uh, the P and K, which are marked in uh, black and uh, the PN, 1, PN, 2, PN, N, uh, marked in red, they are uh, arguments. They enter here of, the, of our function. Then, uh, so this, if we set here Q equals zero, uh, this formula will give us a classical character formula, gilfan settling formula for character of Mm, finite dimensional representation of uh, GLNC of a complex group, just a standard polynomial representation of GLNC. And uh, it is natural to think that, guess, natural to guess that this Q deformed formula is also a character of something. And this is true. Uh, it is proven that the resulting formula it is a character of some finite dimensional representation of. Uh, of quantum affine algebra GLN hat. And uh, this can be seen as a Q Langlands uh, local correspondence because it says that actually Q deformed spherical function, if we see it, think of it as a sum matrix coefficient on a quantum group, spherical or on quantum group. So it equals to character on quantum affine group. So the matrix coefficient on one object in representation of quantum group is a character of some other object, which is quantum affine algebra. This what uh, usually happens in the uh, Langlands in the Langlands correspondence. And uh, this, indeed, if we take the non-Archimedean limit, if we specify Q to zero, then the above formula will reproduce us the Langlands Shintani formula for periodic uh, spherical Whittaker function. So the Langlands Shintani formula says that the periodic Whittaker function equals to character of a complex group. So here, look, uh, please pay attention that the base fields are uh, changed, but for GLN, the dual group is again GLN. But if you take orthogonal group or symplectic group, on the right-hand side, you will get character of the dual group. And uh, the extension to other groups is, called, is known as kasselmann shalaika formula. So this is just the, uh, uh, in Archimedean limit, this, uh, we reproduce indeed the non-Archimedean local Langlands correspondence in this sense. And uh, now question what we get if we take limit Q to one in the above formula. So what if we take, of course, this limit is more tricky. Uh, however, you can do it. And uh, the answer is that uh, Q to one Archimedean limit, it gives the, um, uh, given Tal's integral formula for the uh, spherical Whittaker function for a real group. So it has the shape of uh, exponential of some 
function. So it's like stationary phase integral. And this, this, is, this function f is called the landau ginzburg potential. And uh, remarkably also in this limit, the gilfand settling patterns of uh, some positive integers subjected to inequalities, it reproduces the gilfand settling graph. So it gives a continuous version of this, that pattern. And uh, the, in our function f, you see it is a, we have summation over exponentials over all the arrows in our graph. And the exponentials also positive functions. So in this limit, positive integers p and k entering the uh, Gilfand settling patterns uh, produce, re reproduce the positive exponentials. Right. So now, finally, I want to finish with the mirror symmetry perspective, namely, give as I promised in the Mellon Barnes type integral representations. Uh, explain the geometric meaning uh, in terms of uh, counting of some geometric objects. So this is uh, gives the uh, geometric uh, interpretation. So for simplicity, let us consider the um, Q deformed first Whittaker function, which is associated with the partition consisting just one uh row then uh from our previous formula it has this form uh, the uh, family of commuting q difference operators just uh, produce this single order n difference equation then uh let uh q m we consider the space of degree d algebraic maps. So it's just complex algebraic geometry, maps of uh, projective line to projective space, which consists of homogeneous polynomials in two variables. Y1, Y2 are homogeneous coordinates on P1. And uh, so the space of such maps is just a projective space, finite dimensional. Then we have action of this group on the um, on this space so the um, c cross acts just on rotating the loops so called so it acts on p1 and the gln acts in the target space in pn minus one uh, then it is not hard to interpret our q Whittaker function as a, um, a trace in uh, um, trace in the space of uh, of this group, so C cross uh, times GLN acting in our space of these maps P1 to Pn minus one. But please note, we take limit D to infinity. So this means that our cubic function describes the uh, maps of degree infinity. So, so, of course, they are not algebraic anymore, but this is like the answer that we have. And uh, it has, uh, of course, rigorous uh, interpretation in non-algebraic setting. We need to introduce uh, holomorphic maps instead of uh, maps of degree uh, infinity. And uh, again, taking limit now Q to one, for a uh, real uh, uh, spherical Whittaker functions, we get the interpretation of the Whittaker function as a uh, equivalent volume of the of this space. So it's like a limit of a character is given by symplectic volume. And uh, so in, if we go down to the example of GL2 or even to GL1, we can uh, formulate the mirror symmetry in very, in like in terms of building blocks, in terms of two different integral representations of gamma function. So one integral representation gives us 
the stationary phase integral. So it is a exponential function of this, which is uh, standard. And another one is a symplectic volume of some infinite dimensional space. And uh, it is proven that uh, the underlying um, sigma models, type, type A and type B, equivariant sigma models are mirrored to each other. So it is a, a theorem that these um, two integral representations, two geometric pictures give a mirror dual to each other. So let me uh, stop here and uh, thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Sergey, for this very interesting talk, actually. Uh, any questions for him? Actually, I have one. So part of this, uh, I guess this story also is, is co connecting with this uh, AD Toda chain, right? So is there some similar story for the Heisenberg spin chain or even the uh, XXQ, XXZ version, uh, Q default version? Uh, yes, this is actually my uh, uh, my main um, point that uh, this um, there are many ways that this is what I wanted to introduce that uh, this approach allow it, it can be extended in several directions. So okay. first of all, it should work, and uh, it is checked in some special cases for other spherical functions, not only for Whittaker function, but for general spherical function. Second point, it can be extended to, as you say, uh, to other quantum integral systems, to other spin chains. And uh, mm -hmm. this, uh, this should work uh, as well. And uh, the formula, so uh, for example, like for Calogero systems, or as you say, to magnet models, uh, exactly that. Uh, mm -hmm. So this uh, this should be uh, sh should be work. Yes, Th this should work. I see. And uh, the last uh, couple of slides you're talking about is mirror symmetry. So they indicate some kind of spectral duality for the integral yes. quantum integral system. Exactly. 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 Yes. I see. I see. Yeah, I guess physicists also yeah look something similar on uh, um, this this. This actually a friend of mine, like Peter Korotiv, I think he's been working on this for, for some time, connecting this story, the mirror symmetry and the spectral duality. Yeah. I see. Okay, that's right. So, 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 so basically all this uh, special limit you are taking, so then when we're trying to work out the saddle, into, saddle point of those pass integral, they essentially become like the corresponding basic ends as equations of the yeah. kind of respective integrable system. Yes, the, yeah, yeah. roughly the story here. I see, I see, I see, okay. I see. Okay, so Thank you very much, yes, for a very- Well, that's the physics side of the question. There. Yeah, this is absolutely reasonable here, yeah. I see, so, okay. okay that's, that's, uh, that's nice. Any other questions? Okay, I guess that concludes uh, this morning session. So let's thank Sergey and uh, all the other speakers for this morning. Okay. Thank you very much.